Um, welcome to Con 2023. Um, today, we are going to be talking to Kristen, Sarah, and Julia about their story and sexy I'm going to put all of the things that were sexy right on me. <laughs> okay. um, my name is Stacey. I'm a librarian and author. And this is my second time moderating a panel, and I had the pleasure of meeting Julia and Paul. Um, so I just want to thank our sponsors, the Friends of the Ashes Library, um, Carolyn Linden's Romance of the Court, uh, but also our bookseller, Asa Fable, that book that did you can book. And I just want to remind you all of this. Um, so welcome. Uh, and again, I'm going to dive right into this. And I'm going to ask if, if you could just take a minute to tell us about yourself and um, tell us about your latest book. I'm Kristen Higgins. Uh, I have a mother of two adult kids. My son just got off my phone. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my, my, I have a book out in a couple weeks, a little bit of summer. Good question. Here's one. Um, I write contemporary romantic women's fiction, and, and this book is uh, a woman who has this nice quiet life. She's a store and wealthy mass, and she works with her grandfather, and he walks into a store, and she gets this feeling, and she looks at her, and she gets him, and gets the son she gets for adoption, and he's back to find her. 18 years later, um, with no phone call or email first. So, um, so it's a story of motherhood and motherhood. I'll stop there. So if you want. <laughs> I am Regina Kyle. Uh, I am from nearby Connecticut. I write high heat uh, contemporary romance, uh, both male female and female. Um, I am obsessed with theater, office theater, and hockey. Um, sorry to all the boots. Yeah. Uh, I love your sales. I know, I know, but I got to I, I tend to write on the left side. Uh, a lot of, I hope, witty banter. Um, I just tell my top part of the time. Not so. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I borrow um, uh, my two most recent releases went out to the rest of the main, which is all set in Italy. It's Word Proximity, Rom Com, and uh, Trump, which I wrote as part of Serena Bowles' world, the next one of her author books. Um, and that is uh, combining my two loves, Theater Geek meets Hot and Hot. Uh, I'm Sarah McLean. I write historical romance novels. I'm a romance reader. And, um, and I have a podcast called Baby. Um, and I'm going to leave this book. My book, Knockout, which is the third in my current series, The Hell Spells, which is a Victorian era of patriarchy smashing and also smashing in other ways. Kind of series. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Julia Kent. Um, I'm a local. I live about 20 minutes away from here. But I write contemporary rom com. Um, I, my tagline is romantic comedy with an edge. I write about people falling in love with chickens sometimes. <laughs> um, but my, but, uh, 
kind of a general feel is, is community and all of the laughter that comes naturally from this crazy thing that we live through in life. Um, my most recent book was Love You Now, which um, came out about two months ago and is set in a world, uh, a small town in Maine called Love You Maine, where every day is Valentine's Day. And it's not paranormal, it's just like a schlocky tourist town that's filled with love where everything's heart shaped and people are still small town people. And so you know, they get to fight over which shade of pink the signs. <laughs> but everybody comes together in the end and they're going up. Um, but I have a new series coming out this summer. This is just brand new information to me that's out there anyway, but I'll see the cool exclusive. Um, yeah. And I have a, a new series, it's a wedding. Never written theory. And the first book we did, we're doing public right now. It's called Never Plan a Billionaire's Wedding. <laughs> so it's it's gonna be fun and weird and no chickens. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Always room and cover art. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna dive right in. Since our panel is make mine, swoony and sexy. How do you decide on the steam levels for your books? So I um I try to discuss in graphic detail on something I have like educated, you know, uniform wearing school girl at heart. I laugh all the way through and I kind of <laughs> when you look at the screen, I was like, they broke for nipples. I thought if I can't if I can't endure my book scenes then. I do think that I write um, really great leading up to scene. So, you know, I think you. I am a fan girl, oh, and it's the best man yes. has one of the best. Oh, that's oh, amazing. That is my favorite. It's like, for me, I love yeah. um, And then I let them do their thing. And you know how it is that. And you, you know, they talk. But um, I can't, you know, culturally speaking. But I think it was, it was, <laughs> so I, I feel like in a way I didn't intend this, but it, it's kind of a big marketing move because teenagers can read my books and their grandmothers can read my books. And everybody's comfortable. Um, you don't want to say like, oh, I tore up with my chapter 14, so you can read it now. Um, I said I love reading really well the sexy stuff. I also <laughs> came from a repressed Catholic my father was once a priest, okay. He went to be a priest and he was a worker. He's worked with taught. English to French speaking Canadian. So, I mean, seriously, we're pressed out. And, and it's probably a good thing, sadly, that my dad passed. As <laughs> told my mother, I think, would have been, right? My, my mother would have been like totally on board. My mother was the original Marvel book. Um, used to have like a stack of honor paperbacks, like where the ones that they didn't get a crap if you returned or not. <laughs> White, you know, circled in the cover with my friends. It was like the three. Billionaire. Yeah, yeah. My presents best Sunday on the one. The billionaire abortion sheet spread at the time. We're going to get on I decided my youth label based on what I liked to read. And I, I started writing romance when I got a Kindle or a Nook. And I started reading two things. One was out of the library, I think Susan Elizabeth Phillips uh, had to be. Uh, and I saw, you know, that grand gesture is one of the best. It's a grand gesture that would only work in that book. It is so cray cray, but it is fun. And I love, and I know parts of it when I read now, you're like a little, there's a little bit of cringy with Dan Calebo and his kind of sexist ideas, but, but he evolved. It's great by the end of the book, trust me, I love it. And then the other book I read, was Leslie Kelly's Slow Hands, which at the time, Harlequin, I think they still do. You could get like a free book from every one of their lines. And so I started reading some of the different lines, and that was a Blaze book. And it was the Blaze books that I got. Yeah, I, I love that line so much. 
And it was the Blaze books that just spoke to me. And at the same time, my husband, who thankfully is now totally well, but had been diagnosed with tonsil cancer. So it made me really think about what I wanted to be doing with my life. And I decided I would, I've always written a lot more about books, so I write all the time. But I've never written a novel, never mind a romance novel. Um, and so I went online and found Harlequin's author networks and RWA, where I'm a person, and, and um, it was Romance Writers of America. And, and I think just because I liked reading that so much, that was what I wanted to write. And they are high heat level. And fortunately for me, just both. Yeah, but, 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 but maybe because maybe not much on the I, I didn't have any trouble writing that sentence. Challenge with the one who's written a few books is to not like the same, and to make sure that they are either advancing one of two things character, they're showing something about the character's development or plot development. Um, you can't just throw them in gratuitously, and some of my books have sections. Basically, how many sections you have and how high you get the characters kind of have to dictate it to a certain extent. You can't force them to do something that's unnatural just because you're like, oh, yeah, chapter seven and haven't had a sex scene, I better make them do something. You can't make them do anything. You can, but then it won't really mm -hmm. it won't feel more authentic. Uh, I'm an escaped Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. That's <laughs> Um, and for me, I mean, as Regina said, it's the characters who drive this, but my books are high heat and they always will be. Um, and it's that I spend a lot of time uh, thinking about what kind of sex will absolutely ruin everything. <laughs> um, and how that relationship will be just. I my friends with Jordan likes to say you should put the sex scene in at the exact worst moment in the book, which will just destroy everybody's everything. <laughs> and so that's what I try to do every time. <laughs> um, but invariably, they end up going for like several. I'm I'm I grew up reading Stephanie Lawrence. Anybody here who read Stephanie Lawrence, you know, like those Stephanie just love the multi chapter, just go for it scene <laughs> and proud to write. In her, <laughs> her branch of the tree. Well, I think that helps too when you can write the sex scene from both points of view too. Yeah, because then you can switch it. If you don't, you know, you stop. If it's just one scene, usually then it's just one right. character point of view. You're that right. one that doesn't talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I felt it feel like. Oh yeah. Um, I think that I'm a Protestant mutt, so. Yeah. And I was a military kid, so we went to whatever my dad's commanding officer went to church at uh, so Baptist, <laughs> Presbyterian. I'm a Unitarian Universalist now, but um, that's just when I was a kid, we were told that's where the atheists went to church. <laughs> um, but at any rate, um, so for me, um, the sex scenes I write all over the place, like some of my series are super hot um super hot so hot i didn't tell my family i was writing didn't tell them i hit new york times didn't tell anybody anything for years um they know now that they all pretend i didn't write those books <laughs> they're like oh, a shabby three and the love you mean and fluffy um i'm like yes okay but um but for me it, it really grows out of who are these characters what are their journeys or what is their journey? And and quite often for me, I um, a lot of my earlier books were about people figuring out their sexuality. Um, in, in so they it, like I wrote a lot of new adults in the beginning, and people uh, really finding whether they were um, fulfilled in a relationship with one person or with two people. Um, now I tend to write more. Um, Contemporary romance, not so much in the adult, um, although I have to close the door on um, writing my books in my earlier series. But a lot of the that line of like how far do you take it and how um how complex do you make a love scene is really driven by the it for me by the obstacles that the characters need to overcome. And a lot of those things that can't be said with words are often able to be expressed in true intimacy. And 
So, and, and also I, I have a problem where I start writing funny in the middle of a sex scene mm -hmm. and there's a time when that's okay, but there, yeah. But there, but one of the things I've had to learn, you know, my journey as an author is that sometimes that totally works and sometimes that doesn't work. And so it's been, it's been interesting to, to, to have good editors. Well, because it's character. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, it's character, but it's also, um, my first reader, my alpha, I call him my alpha reader is my husband. And my husband's a software developer and he just turns out to be a really good faith alpha reader. <laughs> and and having his perspective too has helped me. Um, sometimes I have to ignore it because it needs my husband after all. But um <laughs> but he he will he will give me feedback too, not and not just the you know, the insert, you know, tab B and the slot A, but more in the feedback of uh this this may not be the emotional point that this guy is at yet, or maybe have that happen a little later, or um, wait a minute, he's probably more thinking this than that in that moment. And um, so, so it's 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 not just um, it. I, I don't know. I'm a I'm a dancer, so this is a hard question to answer. <laughs> I, I just kind of make it up. <laughs> Well, I know Regina said she has a follow-up question. Since I'm like in a master class here, I'll let you go. You fast. Curious if it's if if you find it more difficult to write a sex scene in a historical where you, there's language like like you know I'm writing in contemporary, so I can say whatever I want, however I want, basically. Whereas in a historical, and I don't read a lot of historicals, but one of the things I really enjoyed about yours was it. it I don't know. It's like sometimes the language takes me out of it, and, and yours don't. You mean so, like concrete noun? I'm not yet too technical. But yeah. Um. I mean, no. My my books. I tend to use. I mean, I tend to use the the proper the proper word for the whatever yeah. it is. Um. And I think that that is a shift that's happening in historical. Certainly, when we were all like first reading. A, I mean, first reading romances. It was well, a very. Well, oh. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like ten or eleven. Maybe one of the like yeah. <laughs> in both readings. Yeah. Definitely the books we read as as youngsters. Peace was one. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> 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 My first book, my, I mean, the panel of that, some of you have heard it, it's not fantastic. Um, in my first romance, my first battle for this novel, um, that's <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Um, during the sex scene, he brings forth her sweet ray. <laughs> her real, like, leftover. <laughs> That happen. And I will say my friend Kate Meyer wrote a rock star romance and the the, the band name was Sweet Red. Yeah. How do you decide when the time is right for some? Swimming in your story. I know that uh, Rita touched on it, but and you touched on it a little bit. Yeah, you know, I um, I definitely let the characters lead me. I do love me an awkward, sexy moment, and um, you know, I have my clothes on my back, but I think I have a gift for those like, oh, this was you know, this was horrible, and then I write home to you, and you know, I one of my favorite scenes I I've ever written is um. When the hero is first going to kiss the heroine, they hated each other for 20 years. And um, and she just basically forgets how to kiss, you know, and it's like, what is this thing doing? <laughs> oh, I just start talking. Um, I I I don't plan it. I don't plan the first kiss, um, uh, or the almost kiss of sex or whatever. It it really I think I'm I'm more like you. I I it comes when it comes, so to speak. <laughs> Oh, 
and I'll be going to say so. Actually, I love the idea of the worst possible time. I do, at least in my category romances, I do kind of initially when I plot, like the midpoint for me is always what I call meaningful sex. <laughs> um, you know, they may have had some stuff before that, but the midpoint is when like they're both all in, pun again, totally intended. <laughs> But, but like in a meaningful way. But then as you're right, like you can plot it generally, but then as you're writing the book, if they're not there yet, like you, you can't get them there yet. And you kind of have to, you know, I, I am a plotter, especially with the category books where you have less of a word count. So you do have to kind of really be very conscious of, of word count and, you know, having character development and plot development in, in still in this and relationship development within the short word span. But you know, as, as much as you plot and try, and you think this is when it's going to happen, they'll they'll tell you whether they're they're ready for it to happen or not, and and you you've got to kind of go with that, and and, and let that be. The book I just turned into my editor um, has the least amount of sex scenes of any book I've written. So I'm in seventeen range. Yeah. <laughs> So in my plot is that chapter six in like all my first books, chapter six is like the first one sentence in the book. It worked out that way, but um, it was it was an active pregnancy book, so they have sex the first time and she gets pregnant. Well, you know, guess what? It's not you know when you're pregnant, even if you're not like physically showing, it's not really you know sex and stuff just aren't really on your brain. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, I the well, maybe the one difference in historical is that you sort of do get tripped up with things like birth control and you know, there are there are certain things that you have to be a little more careful with not I mean not that you don't have to be careful with all of that, obviously. Um in Contemporary, but you know, the birth control pill did not exist, right? Like, so there are, you well, know, things. contemporary birth control never works. Yeah. 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 But the, um, so there's that. And then, you know, I can remember having a book where he was just so noble and he thought, like, he, he was just so rigid and, like, intense and wouldn't touch her and like wouldn't you know it was all about ruination and like keeping up keeping up appearances and and uh I remember getting like really deep into it and thinking oh my god they're never gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I called um a friend and I was like I'm really panicking like I have a death to do it my friend said and my friend said, well, she just, she just has to go to his room and take her clothes off. And I was like, oh, my God. And then she did not do that. And we were great. And then she did. And that's 11 scandals. So <laughs> there is literally a scene of, like, chapter 26. And, yes, and she, like, he opens the door and she walks in. Well, that is thanks to my friend, Carrie Ryan. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I... I don't know because I'm a dancer. I tend to just let the story flow. Um, and in more recent years, I've been working on trying to be more trope oriented, um, which is a bit of a mixed bag um, because I will try really, really hard to stick to trope. Like I wrote the one night stand book um, that my last days love you now is, is, but it's not your typical. It's a, it's a one night stand accidental pregnancy book, except that you find that like they have a one night stand. So I I. Don't I in that case I went fade to black because I wanted the because it wasn't going to be the most emotional. It's so hard to like those. Because it was like they met far, they connected, and they have this, of course, they have this um, unbelievable connection. But I didn't want to write that. I wanted to write the when they really come together at the end. <laughs> um, but but I in my, in this case, it's an accidental pregnancy, except he's not the father. She finds out that she's actually pregnant by her ex when, when and again, finds out three days after the one night stand. Though, 
spoiler, it's it's in the description. But um, but in that case, I now I have to write up. She's like seven months pregnant, and I have to have a big emotional scene. And I'm you know literally remembering feeling like you know a, a little stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. when I was pregnant and sex and all of that, so it's too cool. Mm -hmm. But um, eating tums. <laughs> And I know this isn't a big conversation, but tips can kind of set some of the theme for when do you insert the sentence? Yeah. But like when do you pacing matters too when it you know it depends on the trip because if they're enemies to lovers you can't have a sex scene fairly early in that book but if they're friends to lovers you often have to kind of mm. play with that or if there's a certain kind of enemies to lovers you definitely want to have it later in the book and and I'm I'm the worst at following trope um so so for the Asian but um I it's it 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 really comes back to characters and their development. No. as to when to put it in. But I do like the idea that you, like, what's the worst possible moment for this thing to happen? But now I'm gonna, that's going to be my head when I write the book, but thanks. Everything you say sounds good. Now you give like, 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 when to put it in. <laughs> I'm debating whether we should ask one more question or if we have a lot of questions from the audience, maybe it would be time to move into audience. We can do that. My friend over here is going to bring up the microphone. We'll start. Hi, I'm Jennifer. Um, I'm so glad you guys are here. Julia touched on this a little bit, um, but I'm wondering uh, what reactions have you had and how have you dealt with some of them uh, when it comes to your spice level? And your parents, your children, your <laughs> but but what interesting reaction? Um, I um my favorite reaction to um a book of mine was um a family I read. I said, I really enjoyed your book. It was really funny, well done. I could use the heat level turned up. I'm 87 years old. I have to get my kids something. <laughs> I hear you, Grant. <laughs> um, my daughter reads a book my Rebel book, 13, and she's like, oh, my God, this is so much. I know, mother. And of course, my son can read one book. It's like, what's your daughter? So, yeah. So, he's like, it took him a year. <laughs> Now, um, but, um, I do get a lot of positive feedback about it. To um, technological authors. <laughs> <laughs> the last is done badly. The sex is done badly. It is very uncomfortable to read. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go with already. Or, you know, ew. Or I, 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 I am not a guy. I need the salt on the show. Um, so, uh, so I think I, I try to walk that sexy on My neither my husband nor my daughter have read any of my books. Um, my my daughter is a huge romance, um, especially cotton books. Um, but what she said to me is, and she but she is a huge like supporter of mine. All her friends read my books. One of her friends in particular, Matilda, is that girl. Um, but like what she says is like, especially because I write really high heat, she's just like, ma, I don't need to. <laughs> um, we okay. share the angel because we read see the same books. But um my co-workers it was really interesting because I'm a I'm a lawyer. I, I work with a lot of people who kind of stuff. Um I had another co-worker who used to always say when are you going to write a real book? And 
I finally said to him, I have written at the time I had published 10 books, that I've now published 10 books. When you've written one book of any kind from start to finish, come back. <laughs> um, my boss at the time, uh, who was my boss at the attorney's office, um, after my first book was published, she came to me and she said, Oh my God, I read your book. <laughs> The reporter, so he was a writer as well. And I really liked her book of thought. And, I was like, and, she, and she was like, Yeah, he said to me, um, you know, not my normal reading cup of tea, but she is a really good writer. And God, well, she looked at him and said, Of course she is. What the hell do you think I hired? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I love that. <laughs> um, I don't get a whole lot of questions about it anymore because I think I'm sort of known in circles as being the person who will then ask you why you have a problem with women having sensual fantasy. <laughs> um, so that ends conversations with men, I find. And, uh, also, um, yeah, my, I mean, my parents do not read my books, or well, my books. He did, he never, he tried one and then he's like, I'm sorry, it's just, <laughs> I don't go to Costco and like move them and then like, yeah. 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 She makes me smile because, like, my 75 year old dad, like, at Costco, being like, I hear this is very good. <laughs> I have been stopped reading them, but then started reading Hell's Bells, which is my new series because it's very like, action packed. So, but yeah, it's, it, you yeah. know. I mean, I'm very public about what I do, and I think people tend not to um, critique what you do when you're like openly public about being fine with what you do. So, yeah. I um, I kept my um, work secret for probably three years. Um, and, and my story, what, well, my story about my father has not been happy about. Um, in the sense that I finally told him and I sent him a copy of my book that had hit the top 10 of the New York Times bestseller list. And he called me and he's like, I got this book and I got this list. And I sent it to print out. He goes, Is there a separate list for self published authors? And I was like, No. He goes, Oh. And so that that was the conversation. And then he read my, he read Shopping for a Billionaire, which is the book that had hit it the highest and um he just said well i tried reading your book um but i don't think i'm the right gender and then my father's retired was a retired lieutenant colonel in the air force and i got know he's in yeah. military intelligence so there's a lot there to unpack when he says he's not a therapy <laughs> but that was uh devastating um but on the other hand my husband's family like, like there's this politeness that they just don't pretend that the random series and some of my other stuff exists but they have uh, my mother-in-law and my um, husband's uncle have like come to book signings and they've read all, as many books as i give them they're, they're very joyful and, and positive about it um but it's and, and it is i mean the reality of writing romance is that there is stigma um, to some extent whether you write hot or whether you write, I mean, I, I'm sure that there's there are people who write Amish romance and get judged for it. Um, mm -hmm. It's 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 um, especially a female dominated industry. Um, I think is subject to we're subjected to more criticism or more. Um, uh, yeah, you know I mean? definitely. And um, but but in, you know, in my kids, so my older two kids. Um, I use the line, you know, this, this pays for your college, you know, <laughs> and um, they have never read a single thing I've written, um, and that's okay, they, they just don't, you know, we were listening to an audio book one time, so probably for really know, which is pretty light, um, but some line came out, some joke, there was a little rival, and they were like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> they're crawling into the front, <laughs> um, but it's it's been it's been interesting. My one of my kids is old enough now, dating pretty seriously. His girlfriend wants to read my book, and so it's just been kind of interesting to see like this Gen Z starting to pick up my books and, and uh, more and more, and, and that's been fun. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's, it's been a, a different experience. So. My son is reading books. 
people on TikTok do a lot. Oh my god, he's like, I was on TikTok and I saw your book, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point of the nice about Gen Z is they don't have like they don't they're especially especially the women Gen they don't give a crap about the stigma or the yeah. like a lot like they don't care and and so they're they'll they'll they read what they want to read mm -hmm. you know and and that's kind of cool because romance definitely does get a stigma that other genres genre fiction that is primarily read by men, cloth, sci-fi, cloth, comics, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah but doesn't get the same stigma. Right. right. Kristen and I just had this conversation when I was coming in, you know, we don't call like like spy books men's fiction. Right. But we think women's fiction. I'm gonna call it all relationship fiction. Like, no more relationship. 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 Yep. Um Sorry. Um, so I was really interested in your comment about Gen Z because I'm not Catholic, but I teach in all girls Catholic high school. So, and I have noticed this that like they just will like I teach history, but for their English classes, like they'll bring in like a Colleen Hoover book or a Sergei Moss book. And what do you think has changed that they're so like they're not hiding it like we were, right? Like, well, I think the covers look different. Yeah. I don't actually know that. <laughs> it's true. I. I think the covers look, I mean, we all know this, right? Like the covers look real different now. And what's inside is private again in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, I think that because of the internet, they have a right a reading community that extends beyond the people that they associate with. So if you're on the school bus reading mm -hmm. a book with a French cover, that's one thing. But if you're online in a group of you know, thousands of other Kids who are reading that same book, you're safe to save yourself. That's my. I think it's also because the world is a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I think a lot of them are like, you know, screw it. Climate change, we don't even know if it's going to be around. I, 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 I hell, hell, this, you know? There's a certain attitude toward that. Like, why should I hold back? And 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 there shouldn't be anything as a guilty pleasure. I mean, unless you know, your guilty pleasure is like murder. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm pleasure. If it's if it's legal and it's giving me pleasure, then screw it. Why should I feel guilty about this? I think Gen Z has a lot better grip on taking care of themselves. Definitely. I don't have to the appointment anymore and care, you know, reading for pleasure and it's something like the problem today. A question three rows back on the box. Don't want to miss that. Um, how do you balance angst and swoon? Because Kristen, really, you seem to take great joy in tearing apart my heart. <laughs> <laughs> you do, but but it's a lot. But <laughs> you're welcome. <Yeah. laughs> um, as a as a young teenager, my favorite part of the romance novel is by you know the the we're not going to end up together novel. You know, and I. I I do love putting my characters in difficult situations. I've always written, you know, when I my first couple of books were were light, um, but there was stuff there too, you know, about like um, being estranged from a family member or death of a parent or something like that, um, abandonment. So I I think that those issues are really what create us as humans, and I like to write about regular people. So we all have that. You know, demon or that issue, that moment in high school, or whatever it was, that that shapes us. And I like to go there with the reader and and the character and revisit those moments and see why you are damaged in this book and how you have to get through that. Because that's the whole point of the story is to redeem a character, you know, and to get them what they deserve. So. Um, it's not about finding love. It's about getting through your own shit, <laughs> right? And and that. So I love I love the honestiness. And when I read a fluffier book, to me, it's like oh, that reads so much. When I read a fluffier <laughs> book, <laughs> um, you know, I I enjoy it. Um, and it's like how oh, it, it for me because I do write honesty and I'm a honesty person. Um, it's it is a natural vacation. But it's not something that I could do for a year. I couldn't write that book for a year. I know. 
So, any anybody else on the honest? I don't go there. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't, Jamie Beck and I have this debate a lot because I I am very self-deprecating in our spot group sessions where I'm like my book tells us or after a life or something. Um, but they are on the lighter side. Um, I mean, you have to have obviously enough damn plot, but there's no book, but I don't tend to go very dark with my angst. And I think that for me is because my day job is pretty dark. I mean, as a prosecutor, you're dealing with people at the lowest point in their lives, whether it's because they're a victim or because they're a defendant. It's mm -hmm. not a great time for them. And I deal with a lot of dark stuff in my day job. So when I come home at night to write, I just don't want to go to that place again. And when I read, I usually don't go to that place either. That's just not where I want to go. So, um, and I used to have a lot of existential pain about that. Like I felt like my books were lesser than because they weren't these deep, it, it, you know, really emotional or, or um, you'll laugh a lot when you read my books, but you probably will cry a lot. Um, and then someone once said to me something that Mark Twain once said, and I can't remember what writer he was comparing himself to, but let's just say it was or somebody did it. And he said, you know, Ernest, you know, Hathaway's books are like fine wine. You know, my books are like water. Everybody drinks water. <laughs> That's not my description. Uh, I love angst a whole lot. Um, and I don't remember the question. <laughs> that was that's how do I balance it? It's mean. Well, oh my god, well, she makes it either people say much better. <laughs> um, because I love a character often a hero who's never in his life felt a feeling. <laughs> and and <laughs> That's happening. It's like, oh my God, this is awful. I am feeling now every feeling that I have ever felt or could have ever felt. So messy. And this is awful. And then he usually does something just so stupid <laughs> and ruins everything. And then he asks me time. <laughs> and this is my time. I don't know that's clear for that. You did choose to sit over here. Thank you for Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. I don't think this. You haven't done this. We haven't done this. Yet. I guess um, when you guys are you know, researching your books, you obviously want it to feel realistic so you don't take someone out of it. But, you know, especially for you, Sarah, as a historical uh, writer, but for everyone, how do you kind of balance that? I'm researching, I'm trying to make it as realistic as possible to what it would have been like or is like, but without kind of overdoing it and like shoving your story into the Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in, I've written my, my 18th historical novel comes out in August and I have never had an idea that I could not find evidence of it. Yeah. And I think if you talk to any historical writer here this today, we'll all tell you the same thing that like there is no such thing as that didn't happen. Humans aren't that different over, you know, time, especially over in our case 200 years, right? Um so I come up with the character first and then I come up with the idea for the plot. And I go searching to just prove that I can tell that story. Although this current series is, there is literally a Victorian era gang, all women. They were the largest shoplifting ring ever in the United Kingdom. And they were, you know, they were absolute criminals. The queen of them was arrested for falsifying documents to rob a munitions factory to blow <laughs> something up. Um, so I heard about them and I was like, well, how do I make that sexy? <laughs> As a punishment. <laughs> so that's my answer. Research is the best part of the job for me, in part because I'm always like, we're all just the same. I'm pretty sure I'm on an FBI watch list for what I write. Yeah. Google, you know, they have 
it's not quite as grumpy. Um, but I, 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 well, first of all, a lot of my series are set in the Boston area, so that's a total cop out. And, <laughs> um, I just am like, oh, I'll never live in London. That's me. And, and our seaport district, and they're going to have a, somebody actually brought this up, some, um, someone here today said, where is that park in that in that book? And I was like, it's Sudbury, Italian State Park, Framingham. <laughs> and um, so some of it is I because Boston's a fairly major city and, and culturally rich, it's it's great to live here and be able to set books there. But some of my books I've, I've set in Ohio where I grew up. Um, I've set books uh, in Maine where we vacation. Um, but so some of it's that simple stuff. Um, I before I um, Became a full time fiction writer. I was a university administrator and a history and government professor. So I got, I tried writing this book under a pen name that will never be talking about. <laughs> oh, did I get, oh, that's not good. Let's just say the reviews were um, probably charitable at best with those one stars. But um, it, it, and it, 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 it really was like, oh, I'm a historian. I can write an accurate historical romance. That didn't work, so I stuck to contemporary. Um, but but it's um, making you. Know, I've gotten criticisms. It's been, it's interesting. I I you know use editors and I try to reach out to readers who like if I if I'm gonna um, write. I, at one point, I had a, a, a character who had to stick her arm up a, a sheet and help deliver or a cow and <laughs> help deliver a stuffed um, cow. And it, of course, a Reader's mom had that experience, like running that, and was able to tell me that I had to use the glove too short and it all the way up to here. And like, so, so in that sense, the readers can be really wonderful for a research in contemporary if it's something I know I don't know and that Googling isn't or going deep into um, reading some books isn't going to cut it. Um, and that's it. that, and, um, and good editors who catch things. It's, yeah, pretty much it. But I, I do have to be careful. I do get accused of info dumping. That's the term, info dumping. So it's like I really get excited and reached out and go super deep in and down rabbit holes when I'm interested in something. And so I had a character who was making an go cheese. And I one of the one of the one of the pieces of feedback I got in early edits on that was like we really don't need my page. <laughs> Like including how you build the fire around the you know, like I was like so that that part I can <laughs> Thank you all so much. This has been so great. Um I think our books out I think it's labeled and I think there's a lunch break now. I'm gonna take Chris and help. I'm gonna oh, yeah, I'm gonna give it to you now for a good question. I'm gonna um, okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. FYI, my books are at my table. Oh, okay. I don't know if you have a question for that.